Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and what I wanted to do today was actually cover a little bit of information regarding 2.6 and Star Marine, specifically giving you guys a little bit of an introduction to the game, what you can expect, and some of the specifics, hopefully helping you get started a little bit quicker. So as of release, there's going to be two maps that you can actually play on. You've got Damien Station, which is a kind of a more, it's a brighter map. It's more open. It's got better lighting. And then you've got Echo 11, which is it has cramped quarters. It's a lot of hallways and choke points. There's, it's kind of dark and dingy. And you kind of play each one a little bit differently. Um, and they both have some verticality to them, but uh, Damien seems to be a little bit more vertical, um, where Echo seems to be bigger and longer. So there are two game types right now. There's Elimination, uh, which is actually going to be kind of your basic, uh, free-for-all type of match. Uh, it's basically a death match where you're running around trying to kill each other. Uh, most points at the end wins. And then you have Last Stand, which is almost like a domination type game where you have four points, A, B, C, and D, where you actually have computers and you need to hack and hold those locations. So, um, you, you know, when you're playing that game, it's kind of a combination of death match with an objective. In the game, there are currently three uh, primary weapons that are available to you right now, one being the Arrowhead Sniper Rifle, another being the Energy Shotgun, and you start out with an automatic rifle. Now, out of those three, um, the Arrowhead Sniper is not a good option. I mean, you, you could probably use it effectively to kind of pin people down from a distance, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, uh, and there's not a lot of situations where you're going to succeed using it. Most of the time, your engagements end up being closer than you would expect them to be. The Energy Shotgun does a fairly good job, although if you miss a shot up close, um, it takes a second to get that other shot off. So you can be effective with it, but hopefully you're killing somebody within two shots because that trying to get that third shot off can be challenging. The automatic rifle that you start with really is your best bet. And on that automatic rifle, there are fire modes that you can use. Um, there's three of them. The first one, then the default is going to be automatic. Hold the trigger down, it fires until you run out of ammo. Then you have the burst option, which fires three round bursts. Now that's probably one of my favorite options. And then the third option is going to be single shot. Now there's no current indicator for which one you're currently on. You just need to know that it goes in that order. So if you hit C once, you're going to be in burst. You hit C twice, you're going to be in single shot. If you hit C a third time, you're going to be uh, back in uh, fully auto. Now there are some best practices that you can utilize when you're talking about um, you know, shooting and kind of aiming and firing. First off, play with your sensitivity a little bit because the sensitivity that you start with tends to be a little bit high for a lot of people. So whether you're making adjustments on your mouse or in game, or you're just really being cognizant of it and making adjustments, um, you know, it's easy to kind of overshoot and not keep on target. Also, fully auto has a lot of recoil, um, but it is your best option up close. Now, at ranges, um, burst is by far my preferred general option, um, you know, at range, and sometimes even in semi close quarters. Now, I tend to use it in mid range, but it is bad up close. So, you know, you need to really kind of dynamically choose which one you're in. Now, if you end up in single shot, it's going to get you killed. So make sure you don't actually leave it on uh, single shot on accident, because all of a sudden you may think you're on automatic, you're going to fire one round and your gun's not going to do anything, and in that time frame, it doesn't take long to die. Now, if your magazine ends up dry, but your target's not dead, don't just sit there and go through the reload animation unless you get it into some good cover. You want to then switch to your pistol and then finish them off using that. Then you can go back and reload your primary weapon. Now, if you do run out of ammo completely, you can refill it to different crates that are dotted around the map. Now, in addition to your weapon, you do have a couple additional things. Um, you carry two medical syringes that allow you to heal yourself. You can activate those by pressing V. And you'll see that you put your weapon down and you actually stab yourself in the forearm with the syringe. You also carry two grenades. Um, now, they throw really funny, and they don't have a whole lot of range, which is kind of funny in some of these zero-G environments. But um, they just don't really act like you would expect them to. And there seems to be a delay from when you push the button to when it actually gets tossed. So it kind of be, can be challenging to learn how to use them. Now, I tend to mostly use these to help kind of defend points, you know, or clear rooms. Or more importantly, if you're trying to see that there's people that are coming towards you, you can use it to block a doorway because they may see that it lands and they're like, well, I'm not running through that, allowing you to have time to run away or get yourself into a better position. There isn't a good indicator currently when one is thrown at you, so you need to kind of listen for plinks or watch for movement. Um, because if you hear those things or you see that type of thing, you need to move, but you're not going to get a flashing red icon that there's a grenade at your feet. Now, there is a radar in the game, and it's a little bit strange, but it does work like the ship's radar. You know, if its target is one floor above you and ahead of you, you're going to see a line shooting straight out and up. It works just like it does on the ship radar, 
Now it does seem like it's going to be picking up based on fire. Now initially when this came out it was just about proximity and it didn't seem like there was any correlation between moving slow or moving fast, but today it does actually work based on firing. So, um, you know, don't fire unnecessarily. Make sure your shots are going to count because you're going to show up on radar just like your enemies will when you actually are utilizing your weapon and that could be problematic. Now, as far as gameplay tips, you know, you want to try and move tactically if you can. You know, you want to run to cover distances, basically sprint when there's little chance of you needing to engage, meaning that you're going to get to where you need to be faster, but you're using that strategically. You're not just running all over the place. Now, another time when sprint is probably going to help you out quite a bit is when you're covering big open distances. If you can see your destination and there's no cover between you know you and them, you don't want to just walk because there's a lot of different firing angles in this game. So if you're going from point A to point B, don't walk, run. Now there is some kind of unique ways that you can interact with the environment. One of those is going to be double jump, which is actually going to turn into vault. So if you're kind of running up to a ledge and you know you can drop down to the next level, you can hit space twice and kind of you know halt, you know, vault yourself over. Uh, and it's kind of a cool animation, but it's going to open up other things. You know, a railing doesn't necessarily mean you can't get past it. It just means you have to do it in a different way. Um, as far as when you're in firefights or kind of setting up to be in a good position, use the crates, use the objects that are on the map to block your shots or block shots that are coming at you. You know, it's really easy to just stand there in the open and shoot at somebody, but they have your whole body there. Now, if somebody's running down a hallway and you're covered up until your nipples uh, by a crate, you're going to end up giving them a smaller target to hit. Now, sure, your face is one of them, which is problematic, um, but it's still going to be a benefit to you if you're using the crates. Also, use doorways, use angles. You can kind of bounce back and forth to avoid being in situations where you're going to get into trouble. Now, when you're going through doors, don't just run through the middle of them. You know, that's going to give a really bad situation for you because you get an idea where an enemy is, but you're not going to see specifically where they're at on the minimap. So when you, if you just go running through a door, there's a good possibility somebody's going to have a better angle. Try and kind of move tactically, kind of try and go swooping around. So if somebody is waiting for you to come through that door, they're only going to see your arm first. You're going to have your weapon pointing in the right direction. Just be smart about how you go through doors. And then finally, EVA, um, there, you know, in these maps, there's a couple spots where you can actually get up, float around, fly around, and it is fun, and it does bypass other walkways. But when you're up in the air, you can be an easy target. You're basically this thing that's moving across the sky. Now, use the boost. Try and get to where you're going quicker when you're floating. Don't just you know, dilly-dally along. And if you're engaged, you can return fire, and you should, because you're not going to be able to take fire, land, and then start firing back at them engage them while you're trying to get into a better position. And finally, the biggest thing I would say is try and play objectively when you're playing Last Stand. You know, there tends to be a lot of people that run around and play a like, team deathmatch on an objective game. We see that in a whole bunch of other games as well. But when you're playing Last Stand, try and hold points. Try and grab new ones. Cover your teammates that are hacking because hacking leaves you totally helpless while you're doing it. Um, cover their asses. And when you're hacking, make sure that you're doing it at a smart time. You know, if you're going to go try and take over the uh, computer and you see somebody's right there by you, don't start. It takes a little bit of time to get it done. You should try and eliminate their, you should try and eliminate that target, then go and hack. Because then all of a sudden they have to respawn and it's going to take them longer to get to you. And finally, defend points for a reason. You know, there's going to be people that camp. It's pretty easy to camp in this game type. Um, and camping can be effective but camping for kills is not necessarily helping with objectives and only has so much utility if you're a player that likes to stay still and work on kills at least put yourself by an objective trying to defend something to give your your team the best chance to win so i'm going to go into a whole lot more detail on star marine there's going to be a bunch of videos coming on it but i wanted to get you guys something that you could start with to hopefully give you a benefit uh you know as you're getting in on day one so if you have questions please put them in the comments otherwise i appreciate you guys watching have yourselves a wonderful day and i'll talk to you guys later take care